Wobsters! What's up? Matt Gourley from Super Ego and I Was There Too podcast. And Paul Rust from Netflix's Love. Have a new podcast where they watch all 12 films in the Friday the 13th horror franchise. No, thank you! Hey, some people like that genre, okay? No, thank you! They like comedy, horror together. No, thank you! It's called In Voorhees We Trust with Gourley and Rust. The show is out now on Stitcher Premium, and they have a Labor Day sale going on now through September 7th with 30 percent off your purchase. So go to stitcherpremium.com slash Voorhees, V-O-O-R-H-E-E-S, and use promo code LABOR, L-A-B-O-R, for 30% off Stitcher Premium. Is Voorhees like the killer? Who is that in Friday the 13th? Yeah. He's Friday the, he's Jason? Jason. What's, what's his deal? He kills people. What wears a mask. What was he though? Well, you have to watch it, find out. Nope. Oh, yeah. <gasps> we back to school, bitches. Professor Booty in the house, and we go up, up the jams, womp it up, get your trapper keepers, and your dick pencil ready. Co- uh, what? Your dick pencil? <laughs> I really had, missing gutters, huh? I had trapper. Oh, shit. I didn't even realize Mechanical that. Mechanical pencil? Isn't that a reference to gutters? And you're just, Long you know, it love. wasn't consciously, but obviously we're getting ready to go back to school. We right. got a couple days before the first day. Yep. And I'm thinking I'm- he's not going to be here, right? He's going to be in New York. <laughs> I don't want to do this so early. What? Cry? This is not. You're you're supposed to get your guests to cry, not yourself. <sighs> but hey, you're bringing your authentic self and I can't I can't shame you for that. Oh, my God. I don't know what's happening to me. I was just thinking about walking into the STARS program and not seeing him there in, mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. in that blazer mm. with, his, with his patches and <sighs> God, wow. That came out of nowhere. Well, not nowhere. It's just in your soul right there. <sighs> I haven't heard from him. I don't know even mm-hmm. if he's here. I don't know if he's coming back. I uh, last time he called me, it was just him breathing heavy mm-hmm. and then a, and then a dial I, tone. I think that was a butt dial then. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean to call Well, unless you. he's breathing out of his ass. I know he, he meant it. Well, it could have been in his pocket. It could have been the sound of like just a shuffle, like a corduroy Why are you trying shuffle. to say he didn't call me? He, he was, didn't call you because he didn't call you. He did call me and he couldn't but get the words accident. out. How do you know what the accident is? Did you call Verizon and cross check it? Who are you? Why do you still 24? have Verizon? Are you, you Keith from Sutherland? T Mobile. Yes, great current reference, Marissa. I don't know why you keep watching that show. Why won't you let me have it's stuck that in time. moment? Why won't you let me have I don't want you to get your hopes up, okay? He's in Greenpoint. He may not be with Raven, but he's certainly not with you, okay? Oh, my God. I'm so sorry you to face, our guests that hey, you— face reality. Where are we? We're I don't here. want this what kind of tough you have? love. What do you have? I don't have? want this kind of tough I have got nothing. Okay. I've got nothing but a bunch of cashmere sweaters I bought at TJ Maxx in hopes that I could wear them for the first day of How school. How did you and guess what? That? It's 4,000 degrees out. So you're not going to wear those. Could wrap them around your thighs as we do garbage can runs. Sweat it out. I'm not fucking working out. What do One I have to work it for out each for? Thigh. What do I have to work out for? Yourself. Nothing. Yourself. Yourself. God, this isn't. If we're starting at this level of intensity, where is it going to go? I don't know. I, all I know is that our guest today, and we need to tell everybody what they're listening to, but our guest today, they show up. As themselves, for themselves, they do what they love. They live their life through love. And that, to me, is is in the air. We can see it. It's physical in the air. You can the smell. quite frankly smell it. It smells like the ocean in here. That's right. I, I came into the, the library, and I saw a bunch of seaweed. Mm-hmm. And they had obviously dropped it off their clothing. I don't know what the, these two yeah. are living out loud, and they're living in connection 
with nature. That's right. And I want your body and the and the and the wind and the waves are one. Tell everybody what they're listening to, and then we're going to introduce our guest. Okay. So fucking excited. Okay. I want to apologize to everyone. That's a trigger warning. If you reverse trigger warning, if you if those don't work. Trigger warning. Crying bothers you. I'm sorry. For prior to. So if you want to do that, if you want to give a trigger warning as as like I didn't a courtesy know. to your audience, then we need to go back and record but we can't. an ad. Because we don't have the capacity we to do. Edit. We can put it in an ad for something. Well, we that's can put it in I an ad use. for something else. All right. If crying is something that bothers that, you. But there's crying in every episode. Okay. Well, then it, this there's, isn't the podcast for you. Turn it off. Well, we're trying to build an audience. We're trying to build listeners. Let's not tell people to turn it off, okay? Okay. Uh, Hi, everybody. This is Marissa Wampler. Uh, I don't know how old I am, but I'm about to enter my senior year. I'm doing it for... The sixth time? Sixth time. Uh, gonna. This is six times a charm is what they say, and, and I'm going to hopefully graduate this year. But this is my senior podcast project. That's right. I am a member of... The illustrious Stars Academy, a.k.a. the Spaz Academy. It is taught in the basement of Marina Del Rey Public High School by my ride or die slash soul mentor slash Chickawa Indian priestess. Okay. Honorary. Uh, Said with all reverence to the Chickawa people. Of course. Uh, Charlotte Shardog Listler. Hashtag turn around. She's my teacher at the Stars Academy. And uh, yeah, this podcast is is essentially uh, exploring the environs of Marina Del Rey and finding out what makes us as a vibrant community tick. And I'll say, can I just say this? I think through this podcast, I have come to love this town even so more. much more. Fuck so Stars much Hollow. More. Fuck you know, it. at first I thought when I first moved here, uh, you know, because I had to, right. I thought, well, Jesus. What am I going to do here? Like, this is an empty, empty hole of a place. But as through this podcast, I feel like I've really developed a, a thick love yeah. for the people. A and the, thick, and viscous love for yeah. For, like the, for the characters. Yes. And and our, our guests today, and I yeah. want to introduce them, are two surf instructors. Now, yeah. we don't often go out onto the water, and I've long said I'd love to do a podcast on the water. I'm you on said, the water almost every day. That's we right. We can't do a podcast on the water. I, I don't, I mean, I don't think your Ziploc bag protection, we can ask these guys. Maybe they've recorded, uh, I know there are ways They've got to their GoPros, because I know I've been following yeah. them on Instagram. Yeah. Waves for days. Is there D A Y Z? Is that right, guys? And the number four. D A D A Z E. D A Z E. No Y. No. No Y needed. No Y needed. Okay, D A Z E. Why not? You can follow them on Instagram. These are two surf instructors, Monty Sutton. What's up? Who is the lady? And Bront Lafleur. Also, what's up? Who is the gentleman? And these two have a surf school called Waves for Days. Yeah. And they're coming on just to talk about what it's like. To be surfers and to get people more excited Sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. about Hi. getting on the waves. Nar. Thanks so much for having us on the program. First off, so. got to apologize first thing for that kelp drop. That's j- Bront, I got to say, we we did a kelp check, you know, like how you might, if you had like a tabouli and you might say like, hey, can you just like Is check out any, my teeth? Is there my teeth right Is now? Is there any parts in my teeth? We normally do a kelp check. I'm so sorry to get Please. that kelp cool. in here. Here's- Come as you are. And honestly, I picked it up and you ate it as a bit of a snack. And that's yeah. great. And I wrapped it do- around some cashews. So oh, delicious. hell yeah. That's a tasty, that's a tasty <laughs> bite. It's a raw <laughs> snack. That. Yeah, get that salt. Get we, that well, sodium. That sea salt, too. That's right. right. For sure. Sick. Good for you. you Good for your skin and hair. That Trader Joe's. That's right. Sick. It, it is one of those scenarios, though, where we are not trying to disseminate the ocean's gifts throughout the mainland, right? So whenever possible, we try not to take the yeah, beach with us that, when we leave. That's right. That's right. That right. kelp check is for us looking professional, but also to, like, not take apart the kelp forest. But if I you ha- if you happen a- across a tasty piece of kelp, yeah, do nom snack on. on it. Nom do on, it. nom on, bro. And now we're going to uh, put a glossary to well, for this episode, episode, much like we did for our drag queen. Yeah, uh, Candace be happening, so, you, so we so know you can what follow love along Candace. Love what's Candace. Happening. Yeah, to nom on is to eat something.
something, but also it, it is to to go forth with like zest and zeal. Yeah. What's that famous nature phrase about leaving things where you find them? Uh, leave things better than you found them. In okay. nature. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I, love I was that. thinking if you see something, say something. But that's, that's terrorism. Different. Okay. That's different. And you could see something in the wild and like say something to your friend, like, yeah. "Hey, do you like this?" And mm-hmm. and I was wondering, could you use it like a nom on that dude's dong? You absolutely could. For sure. You know, or is that a specific to teeth? Because um, that because for some reason, nom, I'm picturing a full set of teeth. And I'm actually p- picturing the opposite, which is your teeth wrapped Gun, around. Like, ah, ma, 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 ma. That's nom. Teeth wrapped around? You, you mean know, your lips, your wrapped, lips around. wrapped around it to protect your teeth from the dong. Like, ah, na, na, That's why a would very you thoughtful ever way yeah. do that. to go on a dong, I think. You know, <laughs> making your lips your own sort of like teeth protector and nom, nom on on that dong. That's yeah. like a hot tip. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hot tip. And she's never had her anything on a dong, so. Hey, god damn it, you in the reality sandwich that you're forcing me to fucking nom on. I don't want it, okay? Can you let me be cool with these people for one second? What? Without Maybe. harshing my buzz? She just said that you gave her a hot tip and that was a great idea. I'm just saying, if you ever did that, your lips would tire within 30 seconds and you wouldn't be able to bring him to completion, which is the problem. Well, it you depends know? on how long he needs. Right, That's and also, true. like, what are we using it for? Just to get excited or the whole deal? Yeah, well, like if, you're trying to go all to, right. if you're trying to go to sleep. <laughs> That's not what you want. Wait, what? I mean, <laughs> Bro, you got to unpack that. Wait, yeah. no. And I need to ask, too. Are you two an item? No. Nah, dog. Okay, wait. <laughs> nah, dog. Nah, dog. Nah, dog. Oh, that means that's a negative That's a no. Response. Okay, nah, dog is what means. It, no, okay. So I'm the dog in this scenario. You're, yep. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, but not in a bad that, way. No, no, no. We no, say no, that no, with no. all reverence and respect, yeah, just dog. like you dog might dog say people. to a Chickawa priestess. Okay, nah, dog. So you two are not, and did you, you actually both attended Marina Del Rey, Public high school, is that correct? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Did you graduate? Uh, Yeah, you know, uh, I wasn't there for the actual graduation ceremony because there were just some, like, sick breaks that I had to be there for. (laughs) Got the the diplomas. Got the diplomas. You You got the diplomas, though. All you need, all you need. Yeah. And one might say, do you need a diploma to be the most successful surf instructors in the, you know, in in the OC? Because that seems to be what you guys are bringing. Can I tell you this right now? Here's what you do need. Great. You need the experience of thinking through things you're not good at. Oh, wow. And that's what high school was for me. It's like, do I use algebra? No. I do not. But do I will not. But do I use the practice of like making myself problem solve? It's something I'm not naturally good at every day. That's a really good lesson, right, Mm -hmm. Liz? Yes. Like you're looking at a wave and you're thinking to yourself, can I surf this? Right. You don't take a protractor out. I don't. I, I would I, not I, recommend it. No. You throw your balance off like crazy. And you yeah. can stab yourself in the leg. For and sure. that's not good because you know what? Blood will draw sharks. sharks. Which is your other passion. Initiative. Yeah, Shark safety. We're here to basically talk about two things. One, come out and uh, come out, come out to waves for days. We'd love to have you. We'd love to teach you. We have private classes. Mm-hmm. We have group classes. And you guys are doing a toddler group as well. We're doing sure. a toddler group. It's never too early Great. to get up on that. Board. I have access yeah. to a lot of toddlers because of a preschool that I ran. So oh, yeah. I will, I'll get you. Uh, yeah, that program, when she that, says preschool, she means a, a preschool. You mean Don't a be group rude. of kids that you taught in the parking lot of the Jersey Mikes? Yeah. Before, uh, Marina. before they went to school, or are they are they of a preschool age? Preschool age, okay, three great. to five year olds. Yeah, they dissected yeah. a cat. I think that they're going to okay. be. Uh, all we right. did surgery on a cat that needed healing. <laughs> and did the cat survive? It did. Yes, Hell it yeah. did. Oh yeah, now I'm on circle of life. Something tries to die, you stop it from doing that. That's right. That's right. Well, I mean, if it was, if it happened at a Jersey Mike's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't a natural occurrence. Like if he had, if the cat had gotten half eaten by a wolf. You let that cat. Or a talons of an eagle had torn up the back, then I would let that cat do its natural thing. That's right. A Jersey Mike's is kind of a modern impediment into the cycle. That's right. That's right. Right. That's like deforestation. You know, like we're not like, that's not nature taking its course. That's Mike. That's That's Mike. That's Jersey Mike. That's Mike taking his course. Getting that Mike style covered in oil. Get it Mike's way. But you. You guys do love to go to Jersey Mike's, oh, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure love Jersey Mike's. Oh. That's that's part of like the dichotomy, right? You can love a thing for what it is and hate a thing for what it stands for. And Bront, for. if I could take you right back 
to sharks on that. Yeah. We love sharks. For we what? love everything they stand for. Love of it. course. Yes. Need yes. them necessary part of the ecosystem. But also, they can really nom on your bod. <laughs> yeah. They will nom on your bod. All teeth, no now, gums. And Bront, we're going to get into this later, but I know lips. Bront was attacked as a as a young at a young age yeah, and, by a great white. Yeah. I didn't know they had those in the off the coast of Bront doesn't love to talk about this, but he was raised on Cape Cod. Um he's he moved here when he was eight. Mm -hmm. So he, he's still he's still predominantly a Mar Vista boy. Hey, thanks. Right, plot, but uh, you can sometimes hear a little Richard Dreyfus in there's him. There's a tiny bit in oh, there. Yeah, for sure. And he like likes Taffy more than us West Coasters. I don't you know understand what I mean? why you. I don't. I don't understand why you all have such an aversion. To no, I, I, I don't. So water I told you this. So long to eat, I, and that's the point of candy. It to just have doesn't in your mouth taste like anything, time. really. I think every you know the, there is actually no flavor. Just I don't think of it as being primarily about the taste, though. Oh, it's the it's the texture, it's the experience, work for your mouth. Just like not on a dog it's yeah. work and it but worth it at the end of the day when you get it nice and soft and you finally get and to you sleep can swallow are you it talking about, <laughs> are you talking about the taffy now nope it's the opposite of what you're going for marissa oh i see you want to get it hard <sighs> Ooh, well, hard water taffy depends if you want to go to sleep <laughs> yeah are you going to sleep or not <laughs> true um, but yeah, so we're, I'm so excited to get into this with you guys because these are two people that are living their passion. And that's something we're trying mm -hmm. to learn in the Stars Academy is that what turns you on? What mm -hmm. turns that, you know, what Joseph Campbell says, you know, whatever, when your light feels turned on, that's the, that's the avenue you need to pursue. Yeah. yeah. And, and as of now, with the exception of DiGiorno pizza sandwiches, which I make with a little cream cheese in the middle, and I've tried to break myself of them because those dicks will not sponsor us. Um, uh, that turns me on. Um, gutter balls turned me on, but he's, you know, as we know, is somewhere in Greenpoint, and he's, you know, obviously so emotionally attached to me that he can't call me um, without breaking down. Um, but other than that, my light feels very dim right now. I hmm. need to really be able to be open to what brings me pleasure and joy. Yeah. I feel like the ocean could be a very good yeah. place for you. It's Do you great, think? Oh, my gosh. The ocean's a great source of light. You know, if it's not surfing or being in the water, it could be exploring a tide pool. It could be painting the beautiful sunset. You know, there's so much that the ocean offers us. Mm. Salt water in our hair, you know, giving us a natural wave. Now, I, now I am shaped— my body is shaped very strangely. Right. It's well, like, a little like Grimace. Yeah. It's a little like a manatee. Sure. I don't know if you've been to the beach lately here. I've in never Southern been to the beach. Calif I've actually never set How foot on possible? the beach. How is that possible? I'm You're just, in Marin Del Rey and you're not getting out well, to that, that ray? No, I... The, the sun? I, <laughs> right. I have a pool in my condo complex. Okay. A community okay. pool that I will, mm -hmm. you know, do some laps in. But... I've always been afraid, quite frankly, that I am shark bait. I understand that, I understand it, but I just want to, you know, God tells us that uh, your house is not a church, and the ocean tells us that the pool is not the ocean. Oh, shit. Yeah, and also, like, you may feel uncomfortable with your body, but you straight up do not look like a seal to me, and that's number one shark that's, bait. That was if my problem. Was Don't gray. I look like one of those if elephant seals? If oh, your skin no. was gray, no, no. I would say that. Well, but you're very, it's almost translucent. translucent. And also, they're not, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the translucent aspect, I think, is like making, I think that like the water will reflect off of you, and you'll honestly be I was be worried they'd be like, yummers, well, inside. Or they'd be like, what the fuck is what that is beluga that? doing? You know, that's the color of your skin. It's and like they're not going to come at a beluga. They're going to no, say, no. they're going to befriend it maybe, but this is a fellow whale. No. Also, you'd have to be pretty deep in that water, right? In order to. Well, I was worried I'd be sucked out by, I also have a, a, a real fear of, of riptides. And that's good. That's a healthy fear, you yeah. know, like. Never like, turn your back on the ocean. No. No, no, no dog. Right. You want to use that fear to guide you. Yeah, you got to have your head on a swivel because when you're out there in the big, great big blue, as we like to call it, right, you, gotta, right. you have to be aware. A lot aware. of the life ocean. lessons. Uh, you guys really should think about a coffee table book just something relating mm -hmm, the things you've mm -hmm. learned out on the water that's whoa that's a great idea yeah i'm walking away with two hot tips two hot tips so anyway i'm, I'm excited to i'm excited to have you guys we have a lot of broken people on this uh, podcast and yeah. what's nice is 
you guys seem like you're actually doing pretty good. You know, here's the thing about being broken is like, I think of myself as maybe like a piece of like sea glass, you know, where am I broken or have I been softened and worn down into something beautiful by the sea? Now here's, here's something you may not know about Monty. Monty is a product of raising herself. That's right. On the streets. That's right. Wow, wow, wow. And That's right. The wherewithal that she had to do that to mm-hmm. kind of put herself through school, keep herself accountable. That's right. Mm. And then become the wow. strong, vibrant human being she is today, as I think a testament to the fact that we think of being broken as like some sort of irrevocable damage when really, you know, sometimes when old pieces of Japanese pottery are broken, they are put. <laughs> back together with gold to show you where the cracks were. Oh, right, they don't hide it. That's some wabi-sabi right there. That, now, is that why, Monty, cut, you have cut, the cut, skin cut. of a 73-year-old woman? That's right. Because you actually look a little like, do you remember in that movie There's Something About Mary? Sure. Magda? Sure. That's a little Another bit what... Another great current reference from you. <laughs> what you... I'm just saying. This isn't throwing shade. That's a much more popular podcast. And if you want to go do that show, you I've been can. asked to do it, and I was going to, I might do it myself solo if you keep giving me this straight up. <gasps> By all attitude. means, go solo, Ginger Spice. Do you know she was the first Spice Girl to leave? Oh my God. The Spice Girl. So current. What happened? So her? current. <laughs> what happened to her? By the way, those bitches just performed at Meghan Markle's wedding. So, yes, it is current. What oh happened to Ginger? God. What did they perform? What happened to Matthew? What did they sing? What God happened? save the fucking queen. Oh if God. you bring up that wedding one God. more time. Bring it up as many times as I want. They just I went to Scotland. I swear to God, all of your references are from before you were supposedly born. Okay? and it's, Sorry if I'm it's, an old soul. Oh, that's not what that means. Okay? That's not what that means. My point is, when Matthew decided, we begged, begged to be let out of Downton Abbey, begged, and they had to write that horrible car accident. His baby had just been born. His, he was dry. Spoiler alert. He was driving to the hospital to see his baby, and he drives his his car off the road. I'm sorry, I mean, I'm a little behind. Wait. So hold on. He survives the war, and the Hell thing yeah. that offs him is a car accident. That's right, dude. That's right. Hastily written. <laughs> yeah. Hastily. It truly comes out of nowhere. All the other plot lines feel measured and slow. That great, patient British British pace we've come to know and love in prestige TV. <laughs> thank All you, of a Julian sudden, Fellows. Thank you. We appreciate you. All of a sudden, boom, Matthew thinks he's got to do films. Is Here it, he comes. Car crash, boom. Has where, anybody where is heard? He, where is he now? Well, has anybody doing, heard from him? He's, uh, in the he's doing this FX and show, the FX called, show Legion. Uh, called Legion. Legion. Which is pretty trippy. It's, what do you mean it's Beauty and the Beast? He oh, was, he, also, he, he did, did the, Beauty be- and the he Beast. He was the Beast. He was the Beast. In the, the, the live action Beast. In the Disney live action what? remake of Beauty you and the Beast. You didn't see the ending? What? Yeah, at the end, the Beast turns back into him, and it's him, but it was him before. Ah! Yeah, it's him. No! It's him. Well, you know, that actually follows, because in the animated version, and I don't mean to insult the French People. The animated version, Brant just want to point out, came out probably in, what, 96 or something? Maybe oh, I'm not allowed to watch old movies? You can watch whatever the fuck you want. Well, Castaway loves it. My This is my stepsister. Castaway, Ca- yeah. Castaway. But she... Um, but who the beast turns into is one of the most unattractive princes I've ever yeah. seen in my life. You know, it's it's, also like a, it's a bad You know, hunk. it's also a full bummer. And I don't know if this song was written before or after, but the beast has like this amazing song. That's a post right for the Broadway show. <laughs> it's <laughs> very good. About? Evermore, that one? No. Uh, it, you're talking uh, about the I musical. Can, if I can't no, love no, her. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. You know what's crazy is That's the, just you're right, the, the beast Broadway. doesn't get his own moment. No, no. The dude doesn't sing. Guess no. what else is fucked up? What's Don't up? tell me that I should be a prisoner of a man and then fall in love with him because that's a name been in for a that. wrong. That's Stockholm syndrome. That's yeah. affected. It's not right. That that movie is messed up. Anyway, we're going to break. Well, when we I, get back, I, I hope- see that coming. I need to keep my head on the swivel like I'm in the sea. I'm away from the ocean for one second. Is this what you guys feel like when you're underwater, just exploring? Oh. Isn't it nice? Oh yeah. This feels great. Yeah. I could be weightless underwater, right? That would be a, a feeling that I've never had. And like a little sea turtles swimming by. Oh, hey, you want to ride on my back? Right? You guys ever see sea turtles? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all, yeah. All time. Not a lot. Not around here. Not around but here, like but we've taken to, some trips to Kona. You go to Hawaii, they'll see them off of Hilo, see them off of Kona, for sure. For sure. Dolphin ever try to rape you? 
No, no. No, is no. that consensual? It's sex with a dolphin. That's what he says. Okay. Well, that's something unexpected. We'll have to explore in Act Two. Uh oh. We'll be right back. We'll be right, right back with more Womp It Up. And make me want to know you. Ditch Fix is one of my new obsessions. She is obsessed with it. It is an online personal styling service, okay, that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, accessories to fit your body, budget, and lifestyle. You have to have an address. That's the number one. You okay. have to have somewhere you gotta where have these boxes an address. can arrive. Or you could use your friend Lenard's address, whatever works for but you. But here's what happens. You get the app and you fill out what is the most fun thing, which is what is your style profile. Yeah. And it's really, really easy to do. I was surprised by some of your preppy choices. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't pin you for a preppy after your umbros. They don't carry umbros. They don't carry That's umbros. That's okay. They have so many amazing, affordable, really stylish brands. Really cute things. And then your stylist picks out personally for you a little box mm-hmm. of treats. Mm-hmm. And it arrives on your doorstep. You open it up. It's, it's all like wrapped beautifully. Christmas morning. You've got boots. You've got a blazer. You've got jeans. You've got a a comfy top, an earring. Some brands that you know, some brands you don't know. You try them all on. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want, you keep. And they just deduct it from your account. If you don't want to keep it, you just throw it back in this adorable, just perfectly easy bag. pre-labeled bag and you drop it off at the post office. So it you could gotta not go to been e- easier. Ditchfix.com slash womp W-O-M-P sign up. Tell them your sizes, what styles you like, how much you want to spend on each item. You're going to be paired with your very own personal stylist who will hand pick five items to send right to your door. There's no subscription required. The styling fee is only $20 which is applied toward whatever you get. So. Right. So I got this adorable pair of Dolce Vita boots, which only ended up costing me like very little because they took the $20 off it. So you it's, wear Dolce Vita boots? Yes, I do. Well, now you do. Get started now at stitchfix.com slash womp, and you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all five items in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash womp to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash womp. Do it. W-O-M-P. Are we... Is this, this is our cocooning music. Are we going to cocoon with them later or what? No, I just thought it appropriate. Okay. It has the word beach in it. Oh, okay. shit. It this, kinda... this is the movie. This is the movie. This is the music we use. We do cocooning therapy. Oh. Where we go back to the womb um, and kind of rebirth ourselves. That's beautiful. What's the, uh, how does the counting factor in? <laughs> Is this this like, is the contractions. Oh, yeah, you got to count in between. And we work. Find out when you got to go to the hospital, right? Time we it. work hard to push out as well as Listler works hard to push us out. It's a joint thing. Can I say, I do hate to keep making it about us in the sea, but like this Please. feeling where you are between, you keep getting caught in the break right. and you can't get out far enough and you get that sort of like washing machine effect or you keep getting right. caught in the break and you're going around and around and around. When you finally burst forth, it could it, be very fresh and clean. Fresh it and feels clean. like you've bur- you've been birthed. That's right. Now, I'm, Mon- having, I'm sorry. I'm just having an Are emotional. Are you okay? What is going reaction. on? Sometimes, whatever happens, whatever the music brings up for you, you need to stay in it. But this, yeah. I, I guess I've never really listened to this song as we're concluding. I'm so like in a caretaker mode for you. But right. since I've, you know, begun to break out on my own here a little, <clears throat> I feel like. I'm allowing myself some some emotion, <laughs> and this is really doing You're both it for me. crying and laughing yes, at the same at time. At the same time, I just never like listen to these words. I want yeah. you to just. These are the days, my friends, and these are my days, my friends. Make a Toyota, these, these. Make a Toyota? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is this? It, this is Philip Glass. Oh, uh, love him. <laughs> called Einstein on the beach, and I don't know if it's a good song, but anyway, it does. You know, it does its job. It sure does, does its job. Count, Mont- Counting yes. Crows also has a song called Einstein on the Beach. Oh, they do? Yeah. Counting Maybe a Crows. tribute. Wow. 
long December. I haven't thought about Monty, that. Monty, I wanted to get into you living long on the time. streets. Um, so you, do you know who your parents are? I don't. I don't. And I, that was a, that was a thread I tried to follow for years until I thought, you know what? I'm just about my chosen family. I'm just about like what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. And honestly, at this point, like they can find me. I'm on social media. Like I'm right. out there. I'm not hiding. What is right. your earliest memory? Thank you so much for asking. Um, my <laughs> earliest memory is that I'm, I wake up and I'm on the beach mm-hmm. and I'm in, I'm underneath like an umbrella. A beach umbrella has mm. gone, has fallen to the side and there's a, a beach towel draped over it to make sort of a makeshift tent. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm four and a half. Mm-hmm. I'm swaddled like I was an infant Uh-oh. in another mm. beach towel. Uh-oh. Yeah. And I slept soundly and I'm waking up here. My eyes are opening and a seagull is is sort of like tearing that beach towel off of the beach umbrella and I'm mm. being awakened by the morning sun. And you're alone. And I'm like, alone. Like, you don't I, remember your parents. I don't remember who swallowed, swaddled me. I someone don't, left you there, someone like left a Moses there. type of situation That's in the right. basket. And I will say, like, and this is a memory I carry with me, they yeah. did put me high enough up on the sand that I was not in danger of the tide. So, like, I was meant to be found, not swept away, and I try to carry that. Whoa. I wonder if you're... Mother went out for a swim and never came back. Is and this and was I, either taken by the ocean or by a shark? Oh my god! Never even thought I mean, about. I wonder that. if if you weren't left on purpose. I'd never even. Can you play that song again? This the one I just played. With the counting in it. Yeah. Can you play that song again? Because yeah. yeah. When Some things happen. I never even thought. Mm-hmm. What if something happened to my mom and my beautiful beloved sea is that possible that the sea took my mother from me oh uh, maybe she returned or your to the father sea. you know in, know in yeah we don't know you're right do in, you remember the eyes of your mother what are the odds of both of them being taken by the sea at the I, same i'd like hour? to think they didn't both leave me there that's on the still sand. a fucked up move to leave yeah. a newborn wrapped in a hot four and a half blanket four and a half wrapped like a newborn Maybe, you know. You know, in, in Irish mythology, there is something called a selkie, mm-hmm. which sure. is, right? It's Headless like a woman s- drives around in a cart. What? Uh, I think it's like a water horse or something. No, I think it's a seal that uh, is a lady. Yeah, is this can, like a Rona Nish thing? It's like a oh, woman that, that comes movie. up and, and if you steal its skin, then you can keep the woman. You say my dad stole the skin of a selkie, <laughs> and then he, know he went to chase going. her, and and maybe was lost in the sea, and there I was. I don't know. Sounds mm. more likely you were just left. Well, you guys have given me a lot to think about. I'm going to have to rattle that around in my wave brain. <laughs> well, don't rattle it around too much, because it seems like you're doing okay. But did you... So from that day forward, did somebody care for you? Were you on the wharf getting, you know, whatever fish you for could? For a while, I lived with uh, someone who did, like, caricatures on the on the pier. Mm. Wait, yeah. it wasn't Dabney Cole person, was it? It was. Oh, my God. Wow. wow. Well, I, I haven't. I, we lost touch. Oh, no. He's in Marina Del he's Rey. Like, Are you he's serious? Around. Yes, he yeah. came to my 16th birthday at, oh. uh, at, at Six Flags. What a bummer. I should look that. I should look he him up. He was at your prom. And he was at my prom. That's that, absolutely right. That's yeah. a straight up bummer. I kind of just like he's like your granddad. We can make that happen. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Easy. No, easy. He, yeah. I was. I he put me into. You know, he took care of me. It was sort of like. Um, oh my god. Sort of like a Pete's Dragon situation where he. Oh. You sure. Know, and it was sweet, and we had like a great time. I mean, he, he, uh, great memory of him getting me some pie at Marie Callender's, and then he did like put me into like the the loving arms of social services, and we kind of no. just lost touch. Wow. Wow. Well, that'd be a great reunion. That'll be. a Great reunion. Yeah. That'd be a great reunion. <laughs> Should we do what's cheesing you? I would love to do what's cheesing you. Great. So we're going to do what's cheesing you. This is just a segment where we talk about the things that are, you know, bothering right. us. Yeah. It doesn't have to be any, you know, big. It can be big, small, a parking ticket, you know, the state of, of global politics, whatever you, whatever really is kind of just Parental getting under. abandonment, you know? Yeah. What's cheesing you? What's cheesing you? Oh, God. What? What? What's cheese at you? What cheese at you? What cheese at you? What? What? What cheese at you? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fresh and clean. Toyota. What is a Toyota? 
Yeah, so anyway. let's start. Who wants, do you guys have anything you that's cheesing you currently? Uh, yeah, I have something that's cheesing me. Yeah, Great. go ahead, Monty. Um, okay, so something that's cheesing me is, um, listen, I'm like everybody else. I love going to Costco for free samples. And, sure. like, I get it. Like, they don't all roll out in, like, one beautiful line. And some of those hot ones, they, like, take a minute to prepare. And sometimes you got to, like, <laughs> circle around if you want that, like, mm-hmm. tiny bite of, like, quiche, a tiny quiche, or a, a tiny quiche, a tiny, like, slice of, uh, like, eggplant parmesan or, like, a chicken cutlet or something. Right, tiny hamburger. Tiny hamburger, all that stuff. I'm, I know that they're like doing their best, and like I appreciate that. But lately, I've been going, and they have been putting out straight up cold cuts, and I'm like, that's no. not a sample, okay? I know what a cold cut is. I've tried a cold cut, and I don't think that Costco is bringing me here for a cold cut. Right now, you do most of your eating at Costco. Is that correct? Well, it's something I learned when I was on the streets. Is that like you know, if you're young enough and you make like friendly eye contact, you can wander those. You can wander. Those aisles. They don't check yeah. your card. They don't check your when card people, at that check moment. Out. People are flashing that card. Uh, they don't need to. They don't need That's to. only at the point of purchase. And also, anyone can purchase alcohol at a Costco. You're not allowed to have club prices for a purchase of alcohol. That's and a, also the pharmacy. And also anybody the far- can anybody can go the there. Costco. And also, really? anyone can buy the hot dog and drink deal, dollar fifty, best deal in town. Provided that it is on a, a, one of the outdoor food courts, because when it's one of the indoor food courts, sometimes some Costco's will barricade that section behind the checkout. What is the closest Costco physically to us here in Marina Del Rey? Oh gosh, that's a great question uh there's uh there's a cost there is one there's, there's a, a big there's one a ba- on um yeah. washington yeah that's right yep Yep, there's a big one on Washington. And, you know, Costco isn't a sponsor, but maybe after we've talked about them in this manner, they might want to sign on. I do want to say I love them. Great company. But I do want to say a cold cut is not an exciting sample. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is valid. If you want a cold cut sample, you just go to Jersey Mike's. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Get it Mike's way. Yeah. Um, Speaking of sandwich chains, I have a problem with the Subway Eat Fresh that I am looking at when I go in there to purchase a tuna sandwich. Yes. Which I do with some frequency because I like to also imbibe of the sea as well as dwell in it. Yeah. Right. The sauce lineup at the Subway Eat Fresh is placed at the end of the assembly line of the sandwich, which is a heinous misconstruction of a sandwich. Got you want to get it on the bread? Is what, that what you're saying? Why is the mayonnaise, mustard, etc. On, the, on top. the toppings in the middle of the sandwich as opposed to spread upon the bread, which is where it should be. Wow, wow, wow. It's going to slide out. It's going to slide right it's gonna out. It's going to be That's slopping in between some... She did say that. <laughs> Especially if you cover your teeth with your lips. It's very sloppy in that way. But what you end up with is a sort of bread, and then in the middle of that bread there is lettuce or spinach, what have you, that is serving as a sort of like P.F. Chang style lettuce wrap for mm-hmm. a bunch of mayonnaise and mustard. This is abs- both of these things are valid points. And you know and what? deal with small daily meals. I mean, That's right. if this is your biggest problem, where the sauce goes You're doing in pretty your good. sandwich. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're doing pretty good. I mean, I, I think also- you probably have bigger questions to ask yourself about your heritage, where you came from, why you were left on the shore. I, I don't know. For we you. don't know anything well, about you, Bront, because all I know is know there's Cape not cod till eight. Like what brought you here? Did, did, a, did, was there a divorce? The current knows the current. So after the shark attack, I was unconscious in the water. No. For some time. So you, you floated Across around the how that, United did States. Tierra del Fuego in a river? What did you go down the the mighty Mississippi? Where does that go? I don't think that there's a river across. that connects. Did you f- did you go country. down around Patagonia and I'm thinking up? about the jet stream. Are you straight up Vasco da Gama that bitch? Honestly, I was out in the sea for a very long time while unconscious. Bleeding out? Or did the or did he just rub you with his sandpaper so here, skin? So here's the thing that you need to know about shark attacks, and I'm so glad that we've gotten back to this. Sharks, Me too. Sharks will do what is called a warning strike because oh a shark my. does not want to fight you. Right? What? It doesn't have to. Sharks do not fight for pleasure. Right. They fight for food. It's much like how an elephant might trumpet or flap its ears. Okay. Right. And I don't First think of all, the shark I thought that was a friendly a thing, fight, so that's right? good to know. Right. It would, Necessarily. Uh, no. a, a shark isn't, say, going into battle 
right? A shark would be trying to kill you to eat you. Correct. Okay. Now, if a shark is surprised by you and it is in a battle or a fight or just an altercation where it was not attempting to eat you, you just, you have happened upon this shark and the shark is surprised and scared. Mm. Uh, the shark will give you what is called a warning strike, which is sort of like a grazing of the teeth. So I do could, that to Liz sometimes when she's mm -hmm. pissing me off. Yeah. I give her a little warning strike. Sure. So it's kind of like picture a shark's mouth. There's three rows of teeth and they're kind of just like nails on a chalk chalkboard style like sliding down you okay it hurts very much <laughs> they break it, in the skin or is it just like a deep scratch it is a deep graze so it is not enough for you to bleed out unless it was left unattended because this very, is very, actually very an acupuncture technique called gua sha oh is it uh, it actually is and it's wait what it's called gua sha it's a scraping technique that's used to uh. bring uh uh, yeah, to open, to let the blood, the stagnant blood come to the surface in a oh. sink I'm, I'm so, so that that pain can release. And then, can I say that I'm, I'm so wondering. happy that you said that because now I'm reevaluating this sort of interaction I have with this shark. Yeah. I always had assumed that the shark was scared of me and trying to kill me and not trying to help me release some bad blood, which I may have had up to that point. No, I think you should assume that shark was trying to kill you. Hold on, oh, hold no. on. Hold on, okay? Okay. What? What was happening in your life at the time of the shark attack? It was a lot of turmoil, to be totally honest. Uh -huh. I was what using was going the ocean as a, pl as a point of escape from my family who did wow. not want me to be uh, in the ocean so much. Oh, what did wow. they want? Their land be, people? They wanted you to be an accountant or something? They wanted me to be a farmer and work the land. And I said, I will farm only on the sea. And they said, you can't do that because that's not where our farm is. Well, that's right? interesting because Cape Cod, not known for its farms. They were not It's successful. a lot of well, sandy soil. Was yeah. it like a, or was it like a cranberry bog? It was uh, it was actually an olive tree. Oh, just a farm. single olive tree? Well, an olive tree farm. <laughs> oh, that's sick. Yeah, that's, that's not going to yield not the you right too climate. Much. It's not the right climate. I think it's not dry. In fact, it's very wet there. Yeah. yeah. You need that Mediterranean, You uh, honestly, here. Like, uh, yeah, this would be a great place to a have an olive farm. It will not surprise you that my family's financial situation was not excellent. <laughs> it doesn't mm -hmm. sound mm -hmm. like yeah. it. It doesn't so sound you were like it. seeking solace in the sea, which you felt like was your home, but not having the understanding of your family, were you maybe in the ocean to risk it all? Almost certainly. So this was a wake-up <laughs> call for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it changed your life, and it brought you to this one. It did. You're, Whoa, you're, and we both were, yeah, we both were just like brought together by the sea. Yeah. Because of the sea, by the sea, near the sea. Near the sea. Wow, and you guys are really like a brother-sister vibe, right? There's yeah, I something. mean, like, for all we know, we could be related. Yeah. You know? I, I That's mean, honestly, I think, one of the reasons why, like, we we have never had like sparks as we're like, mm. wait a second, we straight we up could be related. Be related. Yeah, like, you don't want to get into that scenario because that's a real Game of Thrones situation. Right. right. Have you ever gone to like a family reunion and you're like, wait, there's too many people here. What if I like accident? I just got to stay away. Well, and Liz, I mean, you've had an experience with eggs, fertilizing eggs that weren't mm -hmm. yours mm -hmm. or what, what ended up happening. There may be little Listlers running around at this point, right? We don't know. Right. Well, We're that was in reference to make, potentially your your younger sibling being mine. But, right. It, but I think we've found out that that's not true. No, no, no. Thank God. But yeah, I mean, this is, um, it's amazing. You know, we can't predict where the currents are taking us, and, mm. and but you two have trusted it. Now and, you're getting it. And look, and, and look where it's brought you. What's cheesing you, Maris? Uh, I mean, we got some of that out in the, in the opening. Right. Yeah. I, I uh, listen. I I was excited for the first day of school um, until what what came out of me. I guess what's cheesing me is loose ends. Is how, not having closure. Not having closure. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to get it. If somebody won't call you back, uh -huh. they won't text you back. They call you and they just breathe heavy on the phone. Okay. Uh, I think it was a butt dial. <sighs> Again, we're not going to know that, but like, uh -huh. how do I move on? You know, how do I move on knowing that at any moment he could burst through the door at the STARS program and say, you had me at hello, mm -hmm. or I would say that. He's going to say something like whatever whatever Jerry Maguire says. Show me the money. Right? Or maybe he's going to pull a my con first. My name is Jerry Maguire. My name is Jerry Maguire. Hello, hello my name hello, is Jerry Maguire. Hello, my name is Jerry Maguire, and I'm here to please, enroll in school. Please show me the money. Probably something like that. Junior. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't, 
I don't know. I don't know how to, to move on. And well, why don't you, you ask t- our guests here who well, have had quite a bit of things to move on from? I, like, how do you live? Because well, I, I, it got, takes two to move on, right? It takes two to have no, closure. No, absolutely no. not. No, no. I mean, like, think about closing a door. Do you need to both push and pull it? It won't work. Like, just push it. <laughs> just push it. Wow. Wow. This is some straight up, like, wow. Buddhist shit you guys wow. are throwing at me. And not to get the ocean involved again. But, but we will. But think, think of think of the, the starfish. Mm-hmm. And he is sliced mm-hmm. in two. He is sliced in twain. One half of that starfish will regenerate and become full again. And the other... You can't worry about what's going on over there. Holy mm. fucking Because that's shit. not you. You need that's to re- not you. you need to take your wounds and you need to Three. regrow you and don't worry mm. about the part of you that is now maybe a separate living entity with your DNA out there in the world. You can't think about that. No, you need to focus on regenerating. I got to be honest. When I met you two, what I thought to myself was- A bunch of kelp dropping dummies. Honestly, yes. Yeah, yeah. I get thought, that a lot. These two have smoked so much weed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we have. And, and we are. They're essentially homeless. I mean, let's get real about waves, waves for days. Nobody's, this is just you guys putting up a not for profit so that people can crowdfund well, let me your first, purchase of Costco hot dogs. For sure. Yeah, but, for le, sure. but let me also like take this moment to say if you are interested, we have our toddler program <laughs> called Babes on Waves. We have our slightly older uh, program for uh, tweens in the green room. And then we have our adult And grannies. And you got, you got, you got grannies catching the old t- people. Yeah, yeah. Should barrels not. for Cheryl's. Yeah, barrels for Cheryl's. That's for old women exclusively. <laughs> right. Uh, sure. Old men are not welcome on the sea. No, dude. We got no. too many old men in the no sea. No more Hemingways. No wow. more Hemingways They're, need not apply. They, yeah. they can be on boats. They cannot be on surfboards. Yeah, man. I'm not here for that Hemingway stuff. Drink your Cooper Libre and get yeah, out of here. Get out. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, the most interesting man in the world. See you later. See you later. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, that's that. It, you guys are really like subverting my first impressions, you know? And, Sick. And, and Lister's been trying to actually teach me to trust my first instincts. You know, if I feel like this person is dangerous, maybe don't, you know, reveal everything to them, including my social security number. Right away. Uh, you I know, think that advi- don't fall in love with the wrong person, I you think know? that advice is also solid. Yeah. I think you need to take at it like... Interesting. Like, I think your first impression should be complex and deep, less, much like the mysterious ocean all around us. Like, right. you look right. at it, what, what do you think of when you stare? Well, have you... Well, you've never been on the beach. Have you ever seen the ocean? I haven't. Because I've seen it in postcards. Uh, you gotta uh, see it. You gotta the see ocean. it. I'm gonna come Marvel. out with you guys. I'm gonna come out with you guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'd yeah. love to. I I've never been invited to Listler's houseboat. Not once. I don't have a boat anymore. You know that. Well, you were staying in one for well, a long time. Not mine. It's not my house. I can't invite you to it. Where right? were you docked? Uh, over on uh, Slew 63. Oh, uh, yeah. Great That's just slip. right off my John to Admiralty Way. That's right. You guys know Lenard, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Lenard's an old friend. Old crony. Oh, uh, yeah. doing that shuffleboard with rats that was so hot for a while. Oh, yeah. That really had a moment. Yeah, I really liked how it kind of like, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's nice when a game has an element of skill and an element yeah. of luck. Yeah. yeah. And danger. Yeah. Because some of those rats straight up had rabies. And you guys did a lot of nice Insta stories of, about that. Which, yeah. Which, you know, is getting people Just excited trying to make about content. it. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, that's that's very God. That really hit me. That hit me to my core. I'm gonna regrow myself, and I'm not gonna worry about him. I'm not gonna worry about him. Um, Liz, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Nah, dog. Nah, dog. <laughs> nah, dog. <laughs> All right. You good? <sighs> a fantasy land. Arnie Neekamp fell through a dimensional portal behind a Burger King in Chicago into the magical land of Foon, where he hosts a podcast every week with a wizard and a talking badger. It's like Cheers, but set in Middle Earth. Or It's Always Sunny in Narnia. Some of the Earwolf regulars that have been on recently include... Lauren Lapkus as a shy genie. Paul F. Tompkins as a fancy little fawn. Zach and Jess from Off Book as wizards in training. John Gabris as a drunken dwarf. Come hang out at the tavern with your new best friends. You can start at the beginning to follow the whole story or just jump right into any episode that sounds appealing. That's called Hello from the Magic Tavern every Monday on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. Woo! Well, 
Welcome back to Womp It Up. Uh, this is a special segment we call Listler's Love Lockdown. So you guys, fans, listeners, you've been sending us your love and general advice questions, uh, and we appreciate it, to uh, womp up the jams with a Z at gmail.com. Keep them coming. Keep them hot and fresh. Uh, we are not trained professionals, so this is totally unprofessional advice. Take it or leave it whatever you want but we really appreciate you guys bringing your your souls your to hashtag us. authentic selves a couple updates we had a, a listener write in last week who was talking about being a gay man and not really fitting in in his community mm-hmm. feeling like there was nobody for him online to meet but really wanting to find that special somebody we had somebody send in a photo of themselves. Yeah, he, he said, just finished today's episode, found myself relating so much to the guy from Listler's Love Lockdown. You know, the one having trouble getting past the incessant small talk on the gay dating apps. He seems like such a good guy with a lot to give. Those four brides who have them in his in their wedding parties can't be wrong, yeah? Any way you could forward this email to him and How put us in touch? cute. Worth asking. Is that? And he's adorable. This picture of he's this guy adorable. is adorable. So I'm going to reach out <clears throat> to the gentleman who wrote in last week. Great. Um, I've got a great system that I use to uh, track who we're, write, who we're reading. Great, great. So that's a good thing. And um, and we'll see what happens. And we'll keep you guys updated. And again, we have said God any people that meet over... If they, if we hook them up, if they are lobsters that meet each other, we will officiate the wedding. I don't care where it is, and I mean that one hundred percent. You need to check with me before you make these big, large promises. I've already made because it because I have la- a life. Fine. I have a, for a full. I'm pretty sure your at shuffleboard game can be postponed. That's over. Okay. <sighs> what I'm what talking do you about have going on. I have a job. That fine, pays me I'm saying that I owe it. It's not just you, okay? It's me. You can't just make and these one promises. other guy, Rodney. Oh God! Right? Talk about translucent. You know skin. what? I have stuff in my life that I don't share with you all the time. Okay. okay? All right. And that's the God's honest truth. This is the saltiness of the sea that comes at me like I'm learning every to play day. guitar. What? Really? Yeah. Who's teaching you? A guy named Drew. <laughs> a guy named Drew? Yeah. Wait, is that that guy you always see Drew will teach you guitar uh, and you rip off the little pieces of paper? I don't know. That, where did you find him? How did you find him? We, we were, and I was doing some uh, some longboarding with these guys, and he was strumming on the shore on a uke, and I said, hey, man, love your light tunes, and we jammed. Are you doing like a like a bartering system to of get course. to get lessons? Of what are you course. giving him? I can't tell you. Uh oh, <laughs> a little nom nom to the dong dong. All right, so here's our first uh, question. Oh, also on oh, Twitter, oh. we should also say and don't jump the gun. You're not in charge. Okay, <sighs> this is my segment. That's what she said. That's not what she said. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's okay? what you said. Good Lord. Uh, what I was going to say is a lot of Twitter noise about single Wompsters looking for love. I don't know how to organize this, but I would love to get you guys all hooked up. There's and- a Facebook group. I know that. Yeah, I don't know I the don't name know what of it. it is. I don't know. Is I it know- Womp It Up, Wompsters Unite, something like that? I know like Seth that. is on it. I know Seth is on it. He and shouldn't he- be. I know. He's but- married to your mother. I, I know this that. This is a place, what I'm saying is if you say, hey, I live in this shit town, is there another Wompster weirdo we could hang out? Wompster meetups, that'd be yeah. nice. Wompster meetups, Wompster love connections, whatever oh, it is. could you just do one thing before we go ahead? I know what you're going to ask me Please to, and I was going to read it later. Okay, fine, read it later. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so this one, first off, this podcast is one of my saving graces, especially oh. when I feel like a dump truck which is a lot. So I listen to this pod all the time. Little backstory. I recently started dieting and working out and have lost around 35 pounds. Holy moly. However, I am still at 300 plus on my weight. I never had a boyfriend, been on a date, or even held hands with a guy. I'm 26. All right. It's coming for you. The change is coming. 
And while I know there's no standard time that a lady needs to be out on the town, it just makes me feel like I'm not worth it. I know there are very few guys who want a girl with this much jelly. Not true. I don't know about that. Not true. A lot of men I've been with are like, I can't, there's we nothing more. here for me. That's right. That's right. I need more than just the whole. You right. Know? I need a whole situation. Right. And it's not, it's not their style. Right. When I try to talk to my friends who are all smart and pretty about this, they tell me I'm beautiful and that I will find the perfect guy with when it's time, which is all true, uh, and that any guy would be lucky to have me. While I know this is coming out of love from the heart, I don't want to break it to them that even that feels like a slap in the face. Interesting. Interesting. If any guy would be lucky to have me, then why do none of them want me? Mm. I have always been friend-zoned and definitely, quote, oh, she has such a good personality. How can I keep up my confidence in myself? Since I've started to lose some weight, I've felt proud of myself. But how can I keep myself in check, make sure I'm doing this to better myself and not to impress men? Hmm. Mm. I want to thank you all so much. You bring so many genuine laughs, genuine tears, and kindness. Thank you. P.S. If I am still a virgin in 15 years, will y'all assist me in making my 41-year-old virgin? It can be an Ocean 8-esque follow-up for a 40-year-old virgin with just us ladies. Absolutely. Hell yeah. 100%. I'll get the leather pants, and I'll see you there. Kate Blanchett never looked better. Mm -hmm. Her Uh, her costuming in that movie was hot. hot. Now, her bangs... Too long. Needed Too a trim. Long. I need to see those eyes. I need the to see to those that baby, shit soul. baby, baby blues. Um, first of all, let's give a fucking round of applause. 35 Woo! pounds. That's not Holy nothing. fucking shit. That is the weight of a very large schnauzer. Okay. Okay. That's that is, like an overweight schnauzer. You just lost that off your body. That's a lot. Of That's fucking and, weight. I, and I know it was a lot of work too. Absolutely. And yeah. you know what? Once that shit gets started, that train is left the station mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because she is getting up every day and moving her body and starting to feel better and better. And your body yeah. goes, "Thank you. Now I'm going to do my job." So. There's only more of that where that came from, and I'm so glad you're doing that just for your health because we only got one body, and we want to treat it right. Right. Um, As far as finding the man of your dreams and feeling like people are paying you lip service, uh, I don't think it matters what anybody else has to say about how you feel. Honestly, it it really is – what what you're feeling about yourself. And so just like you said, uh, Bront, about the starfish, yeah. focusing on regenerating yourself, it mm. really does all have to be about yourself. We cannot go to the outside. I think that will come. There's no rush here. No. I know you feel... Like, 26. Listen, a lot of people don't have sex until they're 24, 25, 26. Like a lot of people don't have sex until later than that. Some people do it earlier. It's it's I mean, you want to what you want your first sexual experience to be is worth it. You don't yeah. want it to be dumb and messy and awful. Right. You want to feel good about yourself. You want to be able to make who your partner feel good as well. This stuff will come. You know what I mean? Clearly, you, you, you're you just starting to believe that you are worth it, yeah. okay? Worth the work, worth the effort. And, and we are so incredibly proud of you for doing that. But, like, don't beat yourself up about not being further faster. You will be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. So take each day for its little wins and... And don't push yourself. It's a little by little poco a poco situation. Right. You know? Right. You know, uh, one of the four billion self-help things I'm up to. Yeah. uh, I listened to this podcast, uh, Oprah interview with this guy who he's a psychic, right? And reluctant. He was seeing ghosts when he was like seven and he was like, let's shut this down. But then like his dead uncle appeared to him at a bookstore. This all sounds very not credible. But when you listen to this guy, You're like, oh, I believe him. You believe him. And he believes that we are all of us, uh, you're, you're different soul levels, right? And so it's the reincarnation thing where we all have a, a mission on this planet and and we're here to kind of 
solve that. And then we move on, depending on how successful we are, we move on to the next level. I believe that this is this person's challenge is to love herself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she is right now in the arena. You know what I mean? She is face down and she's like, I'm going to summon all of my energy to get myself back up again and keep going every single day day. Yeah. You're brave as shit. And just remember, that's my focus, not the outside, not finding somebody outside of yourself. Right now, it's all about you. Oh, I Have love you that guys- she said that. You yeah. Know, she that that was her own tag. So just like, keep that keep that truth. I you love guys that she called that out already. Ever struggle with that loving yourself? Oh, yeah, of course, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like, it is so sad that it is the truth. But like, People are attracted to other people who love themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just as like it's really simple, sort of like overly repeated advice, but it is true. Like you want to be around people who think that they're rad, you know, like the reason Bront's my best friend is because Bront loves Bront. Mm. Wow. If I had to spend time like like convincing Bront that he's like a rad dude, that's not the hang I'm looking for. And also no one can really do that for you. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like you said, sometimes your friends are like trying to help and it's not the help you need because really only you know what it is that you need. And they're doing their best, but it's tough sometimes to give tough advice to a friend. Yeah. All you want to do is build them up. Also, like, That's right. keep in mind that the people around you that you see, everyone's kind of like outward display of what seems to be happiness is not always correct. Yeah, and, remember, and by, like, yeah. by correct, I mean like felt by themselves. Facebook is and Instagram are kind of like... They're kind of the worst. They're kind of like places where people do their own PR blitz about how great their well, life Well, we is. would think that Waves for Days is bringing in, you That's know... right. And you guys are still clearly living Not on the, the beach. And if I could take it, if I could take it back to the sea as, as we just will always do, you yeah. know, just remember everyone, you see maybe like a placid, a placid top or you see a beautiful sunset, but underneath there's like some shipwrecks. There's some pollution. You know, and on. everyone's oh. got you that. You see those beautiful colors in the sky because the sky is full of colors. Chemicals. Oh, whoa. Listen, I'm so proud of this listener. I hope you keep us updated, you know, um, and just know every day you get up and you put on those sneakers. Mm-hmm. We are with you, cheering you on. All right. And I'm going to put on mine as well. Okay. Because fuck that other starfish. I'm he can go you fuck himself to that. He's probably dead. I hope. <laughs> can only don't hope. want him to be dead. That's not right. I would love for him to disappear. Is that really what you want? If he can't if he can't come at me with his hashtag authentic self and tell me how he feels about me, then you know what? I don't why want don't to ever we, see him like again. Like Maya Angelou said, why don't we listen when people tell us who they are? Okay? What if they're telling you different things every time you see them? Then don't see them anymore. Put yourself first. You can give it to this listener. You can say, hey, love yourself, right? And then we turn that mirror back on. And is that fo- is your mirror getting fogged up? Because you're breathing on yourself, man. Well, I'm spending hours just trying to find anything on Instagram. Waste of time. I'm on, I'm on Raven's Instagram just like zooming in. You know, is that his comb? Uh, you can't do that. Is that his yeah. comb? No, I'm like, who am that. I? Fucking you the literally closer? literally can't zoom in on Instagram. You might, you might need to separate yourself from socials in general. Yeah. yeah. Take a break. That's a great idea. I mean, you don't have a social. Who's, I'm who just are you logging? In. I'm creeping. All right, just next like question. Jennifer Aniston. Marissa and Liz, I think I need to break up with my boyfriend. Uh oh. We've been together for three years, and I love him just as much as I did the day that I met him, but we're getting to a place in our lives where we're talking about moving in together and the very serious future. I know in my heart of hearts that we aren't meant to be together oh, forever. This is hard. I don't see us having children or growing old together. How do I tell this man that he's not the one? Wow. Well, I mean, my my jaw is agape, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> That's so tough, you know? You're, I mean, you're not asking me, but you've done the hard part because that is not an easy realization to come to no. with someone that you love very, very much. Oof. So then, Bront, because you guys really do tell it like it is. Yeah. How would you... How would you say she goes about saying this? Immediately, as- and it doesn't matter. And here's why. Whoa! The reason why is Front. because, like, I mean, you love this person. You are not going to deliver this news in a way that is, like, 
vengeful or no. intending to cause this person pain. So just like trust yourself. Ooh. But the reason I say immediately is because like if you know you are not doing him any favors by oh. staying together. He's right. And you're not doing yourself any favors by staying together. And honestly, he, if he is in tune with you, he probably knows something oh, is up already. God. Don't delay, you know? Don't delay. Don't delay. Wow, wow, wow. Rip also, that. it's not going to go well. Yeah, it's going to be. That's why you're avoiding it because you don't sure. want to hurt him. But the more time you waste, the more you hurt him. So take care of him because you love him and make this happen and soon so that he can do the business of finding the next person who he will be this to. And here's the other thing I have to remind myself Emotions can't last forever unless you keep feeding them. So we fear sadness, right? Because we think it's going to overtake us and drown us. Mm -hmm. But really, an or emotion him. can only live in your brain for like a minute or 30 seconds. It's chemical reaction. Let it go. So dip your toe into that sadness. You don't need to throw yourself into the deep end. And say what you need to say. If it helps you to write it down, that might work. Uh, just say what you need to say. You and cannot then stop control. Talking his reaction yeah, you need to think long term short term it is going to be bad Ooh, but it wee. will not last it won't last that no. feeling of hopelessness uh, whoa that's a tough one uh, yes have you guys ever had to break up with somebody do you have romantic entanglements is that tough in a will and grace type of way for you guys sometimes it can yeah we do sometimes realize that maybe we have like become a little codependent and we're like giving too much to each other and not like leaving enough there for the for the rest of the world for sure but like for me right now i'm in like a real just come as they are and then they go phase got it uh got but it. Yeah. you're not looking for a, a permanent attachment i don't know that that's like my style in, in general. general, wow. Yeah, like, I mean, I sure, I'm open to, to someone changing my mind, but I'm not seeking monogamy. No, I for sure see myself, like, potentially cohabiting, but I don't know if the whole institution of marriage is just, like, gels with what I'm putting down, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. not for two two waves, you know? Yeah, you got to keep— you How do you bottle it? Like how do you bottle it? Like a ship in a bottle sails not at all. How do you, you know? solve a problem? Like, like Maria. Maria. Yeah, hold that wave upon the sand. I yeah. was thinking the same thing. I'm yeah. glad we all were thinking the same thing. Thing. Right? Woo! Okay. I have another one. Uh, okay. And then the last question I have here, it's no question, just some feedback. Uh, I, I guess this listener heard uh, our episode last week with Chris Gainsey. Oh, um, and a lot that, of people loved what Gaines was putting down, much yeah. like you guys, bringing his hashtag authentic self and surprising people with his depth. A woman struggling with fertility, infertility, and miscarriage. And, uh, and just what he shared, I thought, was so gentle and kind. We did mention um, that woman also reached out to us and said, Oh, she did. Thank What'd you so say? much for... Uh, um, for what you said. It really meant the world to me and to my husband. That's and wonderful. they're going to keep trying. And she said they're not quite ready for adoption but or to think about that, right. but that they appreciated us offering it up. And so this this letter is sort of in line with that. Okay. This, this writer in her said, uh, a quick note, I'm, I know I, not everyone is open to adoption, so I appreciate how you broached the subject, but after my mother's eighth miscarriage, quote, uh, parentheses, after me and my biological brother, my parents decided to adopt. I'm the eldest sister to two more siblings who just graduated college and are the fucking best ever. They're so badass. They came from a third world country, Kazakhstan at three and five, didn't speak English and are now a financial advisor and an NCAA athletic trainer grad student. Holy Adoption shit. is expensive. There are lasting scars from life before. Outsiders can be racist, and it's not for everyone. That being said, it's the coolest thing about my family. Oh. Thanks for presenting it as an option for folks. So, oh, anyway, I love, I love that of phrase. Love. It's the coolest thing about my family. Like, that is the way that we don't know life. You think life is delivering you. Like, look at this family here this is a crazy family yeah yeah monty the, the and two, bront but could i mean, not be closer human beings but it, but it feels so right it feels like you said monty your chosen family that's right, right. Yeah. you guys feed off of each other's joy and self-love you do what you love like again i can feel it it's in the air like the surf like when you got a really thick wave and you can feel the surf uh, yeah. above yeah. the surf yeah it's just like that. And I feel the same way about this 
piece you know, of shit. piece of shit right here. That's right. Across from me. Why well, did the why did the universe bring us together? I don't know, but it feels right. And I think that the challenge is keeping yourself open to what the universe is bringing into you, right? Yeah, I think so. And also, like, you know, a lot of people struggle with maybe that their biological family doesn't fill them up, you know? And, like, mm-hmm. hey, you deserve to have that that feeling, and you can go be the person who Find, is to mm-hmm. create that. Be the lightning rod for the family you want. Or you can also be your own mommy. That's right. You can love yourself in a way that maybe your parents never did. You can be. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh. That was a Whoa. very quick turn. Yeah, I didn't see it. Also, that I sound gotta keep my head on the swivel. is not coming out of her mouth. It's coming out of her vagina. We got to do spotlight. It was be your own mommy. That's we what. Gotta the, do oh, it. no. Be your own mommy. That's what got oh, her. God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, Liz. I've never asked you about your own mother. It's okay. I'm a just a What? <laughs> you just Shirley MacLaine'd on me. What? <laughs> you just Shirley MacLaine'd on me like when she came on Downton Abbey and couldn't get any lines out. What? <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Uh, we got a spotlight on. This is spotlight on, guys. Uh, we've all taken turns crying uh, you don't today, have to cry. and you don't have to cry. If it does happen, I get an extra check plus on my report card. Okay. okay. Um, but again, don't feel like you need to bring that because as I've learned from you two, education is what happens when you're making other plans, you know? I mean, oh, I, will, I will tell you. I love that. We are both fairly in touch with our emotions. If you would like us to cry, all you need to do is ask, and we will immediately do it. We need to ask the right questions. We've gotten into your backstories, where you come from. You seem to have let go of the need to find the answers. That's right. Are there any nights... You're in your pup tent. Sure. Uh, You know, you're hearing the waves break. And do you ever think to yourself, you know, do you ever feel like something's missing? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, nobody nobody has it together all the time. Like, you know, I can sit there and I can think someone swaddled me, but then where'd they they go? (laughs) Where'd they go? Are you saying (laughs) ga? Where'd they go? Wait. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? What is she saying? Go. Oh, Where okay. Did they go? Where'd, Where'd they, they like, go? Where'd they like go? Saying like no instead of no, Where'd she they, says nah. Nah. Where'd, Where'd they, they go? go? <laughs> like a Tom Young nah super, like when you go to a Vietnamese like restaurant. Shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like kind of wondering got, what the location of yeah, the like people I've that gotten, left I've is. Gotten got past, it. I've gotten past sometimes. I'm pretty good at not asking why, but like, honestly, where are they? Are they okay? And now like. And do they care? And do they care? No, I think about those things all the time. But like when I'm, when I'm consciously trying to let things go, I'm trying to live in that place most of the time. But for sure, some nights in the pup tent, you just like it gets to you. Yeah. Do you hold each other? Uh, hold yeah, hands. we hold, hold hands. hands. Yeah. Kind of like otters. That's how otters don't drift apart at sea. Is that correct? When they yeah. sleep, they hold hands yes. so that the whole the whole group. No, together. is that true? Yeah. Oh, That's come on! You must have seen this video. What? How have you not okay. seen this video? We gotta do a link a to this quick, video. It's a about quick no. This is how I'm gonna get you on the water. Hold hands. See otters. They also use their tummies as a table. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're honestly the GD I best. I do that. I already do that on land. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And their mothers tie their babies to kelp. That's to right. Keep, so that they don't float away when, when they, they go die. under. Part of why when it's they so die. important that we leave kelp in the sea. That's right. That's so why we're again, so sorry for that hashtag kelp drop. Somewhere a fucking baby otter's just floating out to sea. Yeah. I mean. And you know, like river otters. They exist. I just and you can, <laughs> they sure do. They're small. And sometimes Japanese, people keep Japanese them as river pets otters. Yeah, should it? And you know what? You can you, you can find this footage too. Uh, otters. They're just hanging out, <laughs> sledding on their bellies down the snow in Yellowstone, and yeah. it's real cute. You can find it. You can find it. You know, guys. Uh, is this something that you would say you do naturally, which is to seek out joy? Oh yeah. I think it's basically. 
what we're trying. And we don't always succeed, but it is right. what we are trying to do most of the time is seek yeah. joy, chase joy. Yeah. yeah. The biggest compliment that Bront and I can get is when people say, you guys are like, you're just straight up the turtle from Finding Nemo. We're yeah. like, thank you. That's right. When he says, come on and surf that warm mm. current. Yeah. And he lets his little squirt like find his way back to the current. I yeah. love that. Do you think that that character might have been based on you guys? God, that would be the hugest compliment. It would be. I think it's unlikely, but man. But but, man. But but isn't it great to live in a world in which it's possible? Yes. Part of like the kind of duality flip side of the coin of the ocean that I love so much and also hate so much is that it is full of infinite surprises that will continually present themselves to me. And there's also no way that I could ever discover them all. That's right. Yeah. That is a deep sadness in me. Yeah, same. I hate to like ever put like a black in the path of science, but sometimes I think space, why are we going there when we have our own foreign planet right under the waves? Like get down Get down deep. Get down here. And you know, I I don't, I don't love James Cameron's ego, but I do love his embrace of the sub. Yeah. Hmm. Do you guys, now your business is a bust. I mean, nobody's coming. That's right. And does that bother you? Does that keep you up at night? What is the lasting kind of, what is your legacy you'd like to leave? Because God knows it isn't waves waves for days. So oh. here's, here's, the, here's the problem with legacy. You can't be living for that. Oh, you walk right. on that beach, even if you are, even if you are the person that had the the walking on that beach with Jesus, there's two of you and there's only one set of footprints. Guess what? Those footprints are gone with yeah. the waves. The waves Whoa. take away all put footprints, including Jesus's footprints. <sighs> there is no, I mean, like in the long run, you can't be part of a legacy. You what can is a be, legacy? It's can, planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. You ever Leg, tried to plant a seed? Uh, see. You ever tried to plant a seed see. in the ocean? See. The see. See. Wow. You know what would be great to be our legacy would be to leave a, an enduring spirit in the people that come after us. Wow. Wow. Now you only have one leg. Correct. One was devoured by a shark who may have been doing bad uh, Scary acupuncture. Shark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that must be tough for surfing. Uh, do you find that to be something that has you know, hindered you? Or again, is it something that sets you apart? I do not. I can only hang five. I cannot hang 10. That's okay. Um, Wow. And for so many of us to say. Uh, Yeah. I didn't know that's what a hang. Toes uh, over 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 the the, front of the board. Yeah, Toes over bros. Yeah. Got it. That's what we say. Toes Toes to the nose. Toes to the nose. nose, Over bros. Never call women hoes. Think of the noble flamingo, right? That Mm -hmm, bird has mm -hmm. two feet, chooses to use one of them the vast majority of the time. Right. So I've had my choices. Are, that choice has been made for me. I will yeah. be on one leg and like, I can't, there is no amount of anger of, will I be able to do sweet roundhouse kicks while standing on a board? No, that's not that's in the cards not, for me. Not in the cards. But I, I don't think you can also view your physical body as your entire self, mm. right? Because Something bodies, for our, our listener to think about too, right? right? Who wrote in. You have to have success with other things because as anyone that has been in like, uh, an accident will tell you that like if one day you are walking around and the next day you are a paraplegic you can't have your entire self worth based on, on your physical self That's you right. have to be more than that mm-hmm. Right. the ocean is water it is also ice it is well, also mist it. Yeah. I would love to talk about this for days, but we have to wrap this up. Waves for days. Waves Guys, for days. Been, I, we've been talking for two and a half hours. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Shit. Sorry, part of it is that we talk so slow. We do talk Brief. slow. This is, and, this, and this is a trigger warning, but we're more of just a warning. If you do need to get on with your day, listen to this at 1.5 speed. This is a good 1.5-er, honestly. It's going to sound natural. You got it. It's good. You, that's right. God, I want to thank Monty and Bront uh, for coming and sharing your wisdom with us. And, and for our listeners out there, let's all... Take something from today's Womp It Up, and that is let's get out into the unknown and let's push ourselves right past what we think is possible. I'm going to see you guys at 6 a.m. All right. All right. Let's taste some gnar. Let's nom some dongs if they come our way. Sure, sure nom why on. not? Nom on. <laughs> nom on, everybody. We'll be back next week with an, a fresh 
Wop it up! Hey, this is Arnie from the comedy podcast Hello from the Magic Tavern, a chat show I host from the magical land of Foon with my co-hosts... Usador, the Blue Wizard. And Chuck, the Shapeshifter. Most weeks we interview adventurers... Wedding planners. Ambulatory trees. But this week we have a special episode. I am so excited to learn about the Earth lore contained in Pride and Prejudice. We're going to do a book club of Pride and Prejudice. And you say this is a well-loved book on Earth, right? Yeah, it's one of those books that people love or were forced to read or more likely it's one of those I'm gonna get to it. And some of our most beloved guests are returning to read the book with us and enjoy some drinks and food over book club. We have Flower, we have Crom the Barbarian. And Germ. You know who they are. Maybe you don't give a crap about what an academic thinks about Jane Austen, but don't you want to know what a wizard and a badger think about it? Not enough spells. Not enough grubs. Not, Not enough, enough sword fights. fights. Whether you love Pride and Prejudice or have no interest in reading it and just want to listen to a book club go really off the rails, you'll enjoy this week's Hello from the Magic Tavern. We shall defeat this book! 